uh-uh, girl. Ew! Oh, Lord! Oh, woo! Uh-uh, wait a minute, that's a wasp. Hold on. everybody and welcome back to my channel and if you are new here it is simply welcome to my channel guys i am rochelle and we are obviously starting a new vlog so guys we're actually getting ready to um go get our nails and our feet done unfortunately it's a super rainy day in houston and uh so yeah and then i also wanted to take you guys with me to the thrift store because I'm going to, um, hopefully I can find what I'm looking for, but I'm going to show y'all how to revamp, um, a skirt or a dress that you might have gotten a stain on or, and you can't not get it out like a bleach spot that you cannot get out. I'm going to show you guys a hack on how to fix that. So hopefully we can get that done in the vlog. Um, I'm starting to vlog a little bit late, but that's okay. Um, my intention was to vlog the entire day so this could come out uh sunday which is tomorrow so if i have enough footage you guys will be seeing this vlog tomorrow sunday uh august the 21st but guys real quick before we get into what i want to talk about guys we are approximately 1400 bombshells away from 10,000. guys it would mean the world to me if you guys could comment like subscribe and binge watch the content. By you guys doing those things, it's gonna let um, YouTube know that you enjoy the content and it's gonna push us out for more exposure. I would really appreciate that guys. Like I really would like to hit 10,000 subscribers um, you know, before September. And if not before September, you know, at least by September, the, the end of September. So guys, if you could just help me out it would really really mean the world to me um so let's put our bombshell powers together girl and uh try to make this thing happen so right now as of today we are at 8604 bombshells and guys it is like a dream come true i still cannot believe that i started this journey and this is where we are and uh, so that leads me to this so guys i was watching kyra i'm monique or I think she pronounces it Kyra, I'm unique. Uh, I was watching her channel and she, in her most recent vlog, she started the vlog off and she was so emotional. And she was emotional because she was saying that she saw a girl on TikTok and the girl on TikTok had posted, um, you know, she had posted a video and in the video it was Kyra and I believe uh, uh, Aaliyah's face. And um, she was saying that, uh, Kyra was saying that she was reading the comments. And in the comment section, it was so many girls that were like, I just want to give up. And so when she said that, y'all, she started crying. And I, it made me so, I started crying. And I think I got emotional because she really, really spoke to me. Kyra was saying like when she first started YouTube, she started in her mom's home and she was living with her mama. She had a bed. The bed didn't have like a headboard or anything like that. And she was doing clothing hauls out of her small closet. And guys, that made me think about myself. And guys, when I lived in my other apartment, I don't know if you, uh, for, my, oh, for my day one bombshells, guys, I don't know if you ever noticed this. But guys, I would never film in my kitchen. In fact, I'm sure a lot of you guys was like, does she even have a kitchen? But guys, I was so ashamed. I was so ashamed and I was like, gosh, I don't want them to see my kitchen. I don't have a nice kitchen. I don't have stainless steel appliances. Guys, I had a yellow stove and a yellow refrigerator. I had um, these countertops. They were not like... I think I have marble countertops now. I don't know, granite or marble, I don't know. All I know is it's better than where I was living. Um, I was just so embarrassed. And so I knew that I could create a lot more content, but because I was so ashamed, I would never do like cook with me because y'all, I had my, my kitchen look like the Brady Bunch. You know what I mean? Like if you guys ever watched the Brady Bunch and you saw how their kitchen looked when they would cook, that's what my kitchen looked like. So I would never show the kitchen and then um, the bathroom was okay, but I didn't film in the bathroom because I used to use my mirror guys. I had a huge mirror in my last apartment. That thing was from wall 
to wall. From wall to wall. And so because it was wall to wall, I would write my affirmations and my manifestations on my mirror. And all of those things would come true. Literally, guys, I would write my monthly goals and what I wanted to do every single month on the mirror. And those things would constantly come true. So anyway, I say all of that to say, guys, you know, and I'm going to piggyback off of what Kyra was saying. Guys, your content does not have to be perfect. Done is better than perfect. It does not have to be perfect. Just post. Just post. Don't be ashamed. And it's another thing, like, now that I know, like, I could have been cooking in that kitchen and y'all wouldn't have judged me. Y'all just want to see me. You guys just enjoy me. And so it was like so many times I would be like, man, I just, I'm just so embarrassed. I just, you know, it's only certain areas of my home I want to show. Um, you know, so, and that's that little room you guys would see me sitting in and doing my makeup. Guys, that was my dining room. I took my dining room and I turned it into a beauty room. And so that's basically... Um, that was my setup. And so guys, don't be, don't be ashamed. It don't matter. You don't have to have the best of stuff. You don't have to have the best stainless steel kitchen. You don't have to have all of that fancy stuff. All you need is you and your personality and your will. Your will has to be greater than your skill. And the reason why I say that is because you can have the skills to do something all day long. You can have whatever it takes to do something all day long, but if the will to do it is not there, and if the discipline to do it is not there, it is not going to happen. And so I just wanted to um, encourage you guys, be, stay, stay encouraged, and guys, just go for it. Just go all in. Just everything that you have, all of the energy that you've invested into your job at work or whatever you have going on, Take that energy and invest it in yourself. Take that energy and invest it into your platform. But guys, don't give up. You know, I'm at 8,600 subscribers. And at 8,600 subscribers, this is my full-time job. You know, and so it's just kind of like, it can be done. And I'm not implying for you guys to like, go quit your job. Take this job and shove it. When I got on YouTube, I gave myself a year. I was like, I'm gonna give myself a year. And so things were not looking good. And I'm going to be honest with y'all, by February of this year, February the 22nd, I was like, girl, like, okay, if things ain't don't turn around by July of this year, I'm just going to go find me a job. And guys, so much has happened since then. Like, and I'm just, you know, I'm just so grateful because I just remember those days of like, you know, sitting in my house or sitting in my car telling you guys how much you know, my neighbors, how annoying they were and the stuff that they would do. Do y'all ever feel like you're not uh, supposed to be where you are in life? And I, I'm not really, I'm not comparing myself to anyone because I know that comparison is a thief of joy. But it's like, I just, I just feel like I wish I was further, you know. I just wanted to be in a different position. And although I'm not extremely happy on how it happened, I am grateful that I'm still here to tell my story and that I'm still here to encourage you guys. And so I just want all my creator bombshells, all of my bombshells who want to pursue a social media platform and you truly feel that this is for you, just do it, man. Just pick up the camera, press record. Yeah, you hit some trolls occasionally, but I'm gonna be honest, girl. The trolls, for me, the trolls don't really, they, didn't, they just started coming out. I'm going to be honest, the trolls just started coming out. When we got to about 6,500 subscribers, that's when the trolls started coming out. What if people don't like me? What if people think I'm fat? What if people don't think I'm good looking? What if people think I'm shy? What if people think this? Quit worrying about what people think. Just post that shit. But, well, dude, the world is passing you by. The world doesn't know who you are. The world doesn't know what you think. And a lot of people who think that's the right way to do it. It's fly under the radar. Stay quiet. Lay low. Unless you're a criminal, dude, that's bad advice, okay? You want to get on the radar. You want to become known. You want to be trusted and liked by people, and you cannot hide to do that. You have to put yourself out there, and that's what most people allow to stop them. And so um, that segues to this. Let's talk about editing your pictures. Guys, listen to me. Listen to the words coming out of my mouth. 
and as mouth with an if. Listen to me, guys. When you edit your photos, go all in. Go all in. Pink black girls in my area go Need representation for four CFOs But I like them all from weeks to breaks to the flow We come in Cause I've had comments people saying like Oh you don't look the same on your thumbnail I'm sorry not they don't say that they got You look one age on your thumbnail And you look another age uh, When we get in the video And I'm like yeah B Yeah B I do because you know what I use the thumbnail to attract them and I use my personality to attach them. And so that's the bombshell technique, baby. We all about attracting you and attaching you. You understand me? So when you guys edit your photos, I use Face App. I use Face App and I'm gonna do a demonstration so you guys can see what I'm talking about. But I use Face App. Now guys, that Face App is specifically, it is for your face. Now, I don't edit my body because, I mean, it's like in the past where I've tried to edit my body, what would happen is it would lower the quality of my face. You know what I'm saying? And so it's like if I, if and guys, if I learn how to like edit my body and my face, I'll teach you guys how to do that. But I don't, I don't know how. So when you guys see my pictures, I've not did anything to my body, but that's okay because, um, you know, if I, like I said, if I learn, I'll show you guys how to do it. But, um, and so your, so my thumbnails, all of them, you know, all of the pictures on my thumbnails, they are edited. Um, and I will be very honest with you guys. When I started learning how to edit my face on my thumbnails, my views went crazy. My views went crazy. You know what it got to go crazy. So that's why I'm big on editing. And so I don't give a damn about people saying you look one age on your thumbnail and another age in your it. Well, it don't matter, baby, because guess what? You had to click on the video. That thumbnail was fire enough to make you click on the video. The But the thing is, when you guys, when y'all start editing your photos, just make sure you look like the best version of yourself. Like we're not trying to just give you a complete face look, facelift, I'm sorry. We just want to edit them so they can look, you know, look a little bit more crisp. And so my tactic on editing, and this, I'm going to be honest with y'all, this is all I care about. To me, as long as like this part from here to here, as long as that part of my face still looks similar to what I actually look like in my videos, that's all I care about. So what I try to do is find um, the filters on the editing software that matches uh, my chin. And so I try not to pick, um, cause I think with face app, I think Hollywood too, like I try not to use that one because it makes my chin too long. And guys, I don't really have a, much of a chin. And so that that's my strategy. But I do go all in on my editing. I do, uh, I probably use, let me see. I use one, two, three, four, five. I use about five filters. I'm going to be honest with you guys because another filter that I use is 10 because I do like to make myself look a little bit more golden brown. You know what I'm saying? On my thumbnails. And so I do, I do do that. So, um, yeah, I wanted to talk to you guys about that. All right, guys. So this is how I edit my photos. The first thing that I like to do is open the face app. Second thing that I like to do is go through my photo gallery and then I select the picture that I want to edit. Once I selected the picture that I want to edit, I go into the impressions part of the face app. After I go into impressions, I typically select two options and those two options are typically cute and charm because those are the options that fit the lower half of my face better. Once I've done that, I like to select glance two because my eyes are a little bit smaller and glance two gives me that brighter look to my eyes and it also makes my eyes a little bit wider. Once I do that, I hit apply. Next step that I like to complete is going into makeup. 
Typically in makeup, the only thing that I like to do is to enhance my eyelashes and I like to use the option that's called glossy. Glossy just pretty much enhances my lips and it makes them a little bit more shiny and then it kind of puts a light contour on my lips. I'm sorry, it puts a, lot, a light gloss on my lips. Once I do that, I like to go into hairstyles and after I do hairstyles, I like to choose volume two because if I choose anything else, my hair will be way too big. The last and final step that I like to do in face app is to go into the skin option and then that's where I select the option tan so I can just make myself look a little bit more crisp, a little bit more golden. I just like that look better. Once I've completed those steps, I then go into Facetune. I use Facetune to enhance my clothing. Then I've done the option that says saturation because I like the clothes to be, uh, the color on my clothing to be a little bit more saturated so it pops more on the thumbnail. And then the next option I've selected is detail because I like my clothing to have details to them, you know, like uh, folds and you know, things like that, um, just to make the picture look more realistic. My last and final step is to go into my camera and then I like to crop the picture. Me cropping the picture is simply preparing it for the thumbnail. And that is it. That is how I edit my photos. I'm trying to see if I had any more um, influencer tips. Um, you know, I think we did talk about the trolls and the negative comments and stuff in the last video. Um, one thing that I, I would do uh, it, when I would get a really negative comment, I would pin the comment. And I would the bombshells, baby, baby. What, baby? One thing on bombshells, Gary. One thing y'all gonna do is take off on them hoes. Y'all be taking off on them hoes, and it was like, don't. I was like, these bombshells don't play. These bombshells don't play. So I'm gonna be honest. I stopped doing that because they would just eat, girl. Y'all eat the people alive. Y'all eat the people alive, baby. And so I did stop uh, pinning those negative comments. Um, and then what I like to do is like pin a positive comment or something like that. But that still is not going to stop the trolls, honey. They're going to still talk and say what they want to say. And so, um, you know, another thing that would help me is occasionally addressing it. I know that my bombshells, I know you guys don't always like that. But sometimes you feel vindicated when you have an opportunity to respond to something. You do. You feel vindicated or whatever um to my older bombshells um you guys y'all have skin in the game and uh i did before i started youtube i was just looking up different things about being a vlogger over the age of 40. and one of the things that i found i found this lady's video and she was saying that is one of the benefits of being a blogger or becoming a youtuber over the age of 40 or you know basically late 30s early 40s 40s 50s whatever being a, uh, what's considered to be older. Now, let me tell you something. I, to me, if you're still in your 30s, you're not older, baby. You still, baby, you still, you you still, you know, you're not, you're not older, older. That's not older to me. I would never say a girl that's in her um, 30s is older. But anyway, what the lady was saying was, um, and I, oh, by the way, if you're in your 40s, you're not older. You're only as old as you feel. So if you still feel young and hot, you still young and hot, okay? But anyway, I digress. So, um, so yeah, what I'm trying to say is like the, the lady was saying, if you are what's considered to be a older um, content creator, you have thicker skin because more than likely, you didn't grow up in this era. And so you know how to wheel and deal with the girls, honey. You know how to tussle with the girls, honey. And you know how to get them trolls off of you. 
because you do have a thicker skin because you got skin in the game you probably have a lot of uh, career experience um, or experiences you've probably had some trials and tribula tribulations in life you definitely life has slapped you in the face more than a few times and so you know how to wheel and deal and how to tussle with the girls honey and so she was saying like that's one of the benefits of coming on to becoming um, a creator. One of the benefits of being an older creator is that you know how to handle them trolls. You know what I'm saying? And so, yeah, I just wanted to say that. And then um, to my bombshells out there who've already started um, your platform, I just, first of all, I just want to say I'm so proud of you guys for starting your YouTube channel. I'm very proud of you guys because that's important. You, it does take, um, it does take a certain uh, type of personality to get on this platform and to create and to put yourself in front of thousands and thousands of people. Um, so I just want to say I commend you for your bravery and uh, for being courageous. But in terms of just like um, what's going to start happening, I'm going to say. And maybe when you guys get to about six or 700 subscribers, you're going to start having companies that's going to reach out to you, that's going to want to work with you, that's, wanna go, that's, wanna gonna, that's going to want to do sponsorships. And I'm absolutely going to say entertain those things if they comply with the structure of your platform. If you don't have a dog and somebody's trying to sell you a dog collar, no, you're not going to take that. You know what I'm saying? But, um... Are you, you, you got, uh, you know, somebody contacts you about some flea repellent and you don't have a dog. No, those are not deals you want to entertain. But if it's along the lines of your platform, absolutely entertain them, but always try to negotiate a price. You know, um, there's going to be a lot of companies that may contact you and the item itself is worth a lot, a lot of money. You know, if it's, if it's an item and it's something you really, really been wanting and it's worth, you know, uh, hundreds and hundreds of dollars or, you know, maybe it's, you know, hair or something like that. And you know that you can get that to elevate your look to kind of get you to the next level. Absolutely entertain it. But I would say, guys, don't be afraid to negotiate. Just throw a price out there. And so one of the things that I would encourage you guys to lead with when companies start reaching out to you is to say, um, you know, what's your budget? You know, and there's going to be some companies that won't say, that'll say, oh, well, no, I don't have a budget at all. But um, just come back and just say, you know, well, I would absolutely love to work with you, but I do charge X amount of dollars for a post. And I, I've done that tactic, even though I'm still getting acclimated with this type of thing. Um, I've used that tactic and it works. And um, I've always walked away with uh, some type of payout. Now, um, I've worked with a larger company recently and I didn't get the amount of money that I wanted, but that was my fault. You know, I didn't properly negotiate, but now coming back around, they want to work uh, with me again. And so I am increasing the rate and I'm charging tax on top of that. And so I just want to say, guys, just, um, you know, be encouraged. Um, keep going. Always know your worth. Don't, uh, you know, don't just, you know, throw a rate out there. And so what if you don't, you know what I'm saying? Just make sure you get something out of the deal. Something, something, very much something. So yeah, I just wanted to say that, but guys, it is uh, 20 minutes after three. Um, our appointment is at four, but it's raining. So I'm going to go ahead on and head out there, but I'm going to probably talk to y'all. Uh, I'll talk to you guys when we get in the car. Oh, you know what? Wait a minute. Wait a minute, girl. I got to show y'all my outfit. All right, girl. So we are wearing this gorgeous skirt and we purchased this skirt from the thrift store. This skirt was $3 from Value Village. And then we also purchased this really cute tribal print um this is a bathing suit top and guys this is plus size but i just pulled it really tight in the back and i brought this knot around the front so guys this is a plus size um a plus size shirt so we purchased this i still gotta put on some earrings and let me say this baby let me look in the camera baby bombshells baby y'all done went on units and showed out for your girl y'all thank y'all so much guys oh shit what wait a minute uh-uh girl oh oh lord oh uh-uh 
on, wait a minute. That's a wasp. Hold on. Oh my God. What the fuck? Y'all, I am over here trying to get this damn wasp out. I'm spraying him. Ooh. You about to die today, ho. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Take that, take that, take that. Don't fucking play with me. Girl, look. Baby, I don't know how you got in here. I don't know how you got here. Because you're not supposed to be here. Alright, y'all, I'm back. Y'all, why did I just have a fight with a wasp? But that's okay. That's okay, cause I won. Girl, I was using all girl, I was spraying that thing down with uh with air freshener. I was spraying him down with uh with uh like cleaning detergent, baby. I was I was gonna get rid of him. So anyway, um we are now headed to the nail shop. But before I was so rudely interrupted by that wasp, what I was saying was what I was saying was, thank you guys so much. Guys, I was saying like, um, y'all had when you see you in this hair, baby, and y'all showed out for me. I love y'all so much. Y'all showed out for me, girl. You guys really showed out on this wig. And so because of that, I received um, an email last night from the representative from Eunice and they want to work with me again guys so I'm excited so I, I definitely feel so happy and so appreciative and then also guys I would just love I just would like to say thank you guys so much for your overwhelming support about uh when I was saying in the last vlog like you know people be getting on a platform and they be like oh you talk too much or you talk too loud and all of this kind of stuff you know because um i'll be honest with you guys you know if i can just be candid and be transparent it did uh stifle me i, I will be honest it did and that did have a lot to do with you know kind of why the content slowed up i hate to admit it but i will um and guys i still have um i still have a people pleasing component that i'm working through and so I, for me, I be wanting to like, um, for me, I be wanting to like, you know, just please everyone. And guys, I know that that's not a good quality. I don't know if that comes from being um, the youngest kid or the, I don't know where that comes from, but I do know it is something I need to work through. And because I do have this kind of like people pleasing component to me, I want everyone to be happy. But YouTube is definitely, this journey is teaching me that you are not gonna make everybody happy. I don't care what you do. You can fold your fucking body into a pretzel, uh, into, you can fold your body into a fucking pretzel. Yellow. You hear me? But you're not gonna make everybody happy. And that's just the bottom line. You know, and so it's just like that's something that um that's something that I'm working through. And then also, you know, when you have people that come over and they scrutinize and they criticize, you know, a lot of those people they aren't happy because they not doing nothing with you know, they they not doing shit with they life. You know what I'm saying? It's like sis, bruh. Go find you something that you're passionate about. Go find something that makes you happy. You know, go find another way to express yourself other than coming over and dropping them negative words, uh, all of that negative stuff in people's uh, comment section. Because the thing about negativity, the universe is a funny, funny place. And the thing about negativity, the universe is going to give it back to you. Just like the universe is going to give you back positivity. And that's just what a TI is, baby. They leaving hate in the world, leaving comments and negativity into the world allows the world to give you back similar vibrations. So if I were you, I wouldn't leave any negative comments, either positive comments or keep scrolling. That's just what it is. And so, yeah, girl. So anyway, y'all, y'all want to hear, y'all want to hear, um, a little funny story time I don't really know like if this one is like a big a big 
you know, it's my, not a, a long story, but it is something that made me laugh last night. So, we're about to do a rock's random thoughts. Roll that beautiful bead for this rock. All right, guys. So, when I was like, I think I was like in my late 20s or maybe in my early 30s. I used to be going to the club and stuff a lot. I had this friend and my friend, y'all, she was so sweet. Oh my gosh. She was so such a sweet girl. And so she had been dating this dude and, um, you know, they had broke up. And when they broke up, you know, she was sad and stuff or whatever. And so, you know, I was trying to cheer her up. And I was like, girl, okay, girl, what's the move, baby? What's the move? Like, trying to get her out the house and stuff or whatever. And so, like, I think that they had not seen each other and hadn't talked in, like, maybe three weeks, maybe a month. Um, and so she was like, well, yeah, you know, I was like, you need to get out the house. We need to do something. You need to get out the house. And so she, so anyway, I convinced her to uh, to get out the house. And so we went out to this club. Meet me in the club. It's going down. But before we went to the club, I had to go to Rainbow, baby. I went to Rainbow so I could pick up, you know, so I could get, get me like a fly little outfit. So guys, this was when I was still like a really... This was like when I was still like a really big girl or whatever. <laughs> so I went to Rainbow and I had got these jeans. They was like some boot cut jeans, but girl, you couldn't tell me I wasn't looking good. At those jeans. Like I, I thought I was fine. So I got me some like some boot cut jeans and then I got me a peasant shirt because at the time y'all peasant shirts was real. That was like the hottest shit in town. Peasant shirts was that girl. So I had got me like a little cute peasant skirt, a shirt, and it had like a little blue pattern. But anyway, that's besides the point. So basically, I got dressed and stuff, and so she was like, okay, I'm going to come pick you up. So she had came to pick me up, and um, I don't even, guys, I don't even know if I knew how to drive at this point. I don't think, yeah, I don't think I knew how to drive because she actually, y'all, she taught me how to drive. She was so sweet. I miss my friend. She moved to Virginia, but anyway, so she came to pick me up and we went to the club and baby, you couldn't tell me I wasn't looking fly or whatever. I knew I was looking good. I had my Kenneth Cole shoes on, my nails were done, and my hair was fierce. And so, uh... We went to the club. So when we got there, you know, I ain't gonna lie to fellas. They was looking good. It was some nice looking dudes there, whatever. And we was having fun. We was dancing. We was drinking. And get smoking straight west coaching. So we was, well, no, I wasn't smoking. I'm not a smoker, but that's okay. Um, but we was, you know, drinking. And we was just having fun or whatever. And then we see her ex boyfriend when she seen him it's like i could just look at her and just tell like her heart just like dropped to her toes or whatever and so i knew like she really missed him and stuff when they seen each other you know they ended up hanging out for the rest of the night and i was just kind of like you know there he had a friend with him but his friend he wasn't like interested in me or whatever and so at the like end of the night she came up to me and she was just kind of like you know i'm gonna go to anthony's house and i'm like sis like how i'm gonna get home you know what i'm saying how how am i gonna get home or whatever and so she was like well you know i asked his friend if he could take you home and so i was just like okay you know whatever and um so the friend y'all and this is the point this is the embarrassing part right here so the friend um i rode with him but y'all the friend had a pickup truck the pickup truck only had two seats in it and so i ended up having to sit in the bed of the fucking trunk yes you heard it here first folks I sat in the bed of the fucking trunk because this boy had like a big ass like drum, not a musical drum, but some type of drum, a fucking keg of beer or something in the passenger seat in the pickup truck. So bitch, I had to drive, I had to ride all the way home with my peasant shirt on in the back of the fucking 
uh, in the bed of the trunk and I was so embarrassed and girl we had to get on the freeway y'all we had to get on 59 and that's the freeway here in Houston bitch I was on 59 in the bed of the truck with my rainbow my coldest rainbow outfit on bitch I was so embarrassed and so girl my hair was flying all over the place y'all y'all know them peasant sleeves them big ass bell sleeves them, you know anyway girl I'm trying to like move my hair out the way like this the peasant sleeves just kicking my ass Google me, bitch. just like hit me all in my face because it was just so embarrassing and so guys this was also before like cell phones were like really 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 popular like that and so anyway it wasn't like I could text him guys texting there was no such thing as texting you couldn't text so it wasn't like I could text him so basically I had gave him my address and you know that's at the time you know you write your address down on a piece of paper so this nigga in the truck he driving or whatever looking at the paper to find my address girl but anyway so I'm in the bed of the book of the fucking uh trunk and so it wasn't like I could tell him when he got to my apartment the gate code or whatever so he did not this first of all this dude like he ain't try to holler at me or nothing like that which is whatever whatever it don't matter but girl he basically uh let me out in the front of my apartment complex I had to get out the bed of the truck and go into my apartment complex because he didn't even like ask me to gate code or nothing to get into my apartment and I was so fucking embarrassed and so the moral of the story is we got uber now sis bruh if you got a friend who end up seeing her ex boo and they get back together at the club just focus on yourself because if you didn't drive that night you gonna be in the back of somebody's fucking uh the bed of somebody pickup truck or either you gonna be in an uber or you gonna be in a lift because one thing about when people when people head over heels and they in love it don't they, not everybody do this but some people gonna leave your ass high and fucking dry so anyway girl we are um i got about nine minutes to get to my appointment um, it's 3.51, so anyway, I'm about to run in here, get my nails done real quick, and I'm going to call y'all back. A brand new woman honey I feel so good so y'all uh, I stopped at the gas station I thought I filled the car up but I'm seeing that the needle is not going all the way to the full thing or whatever but that's fine I go get us something to eat Lizzie so anyway we're going to go get something to eat um, I'm hungry and I cannot wait I have not really eaten all day but that's okay cuz we gonna fix that in a minute but guys so let me we finna do a bombshell poll have you guys ever met someone and they talk a lot about like their accomplishments and you know the things that they've accomplished and they're like really really like super proud i love people like that like i love people that's not afraid to like share their story but i also was thinking about you know y'all ever think about maybe people who really talk uh, more about their accomplishments maybe they do that because those same people have faced a lot of rejection like i i feel that way like i feel like guys i have faced like so much rejection and it's just like rejected from you know corporate america like you, you know like never quite you know what i'm saying like that was always like a dream of mine to like have a corner office on the 20th floor overlooking the city 
and it's just like those opportunities just never I guess they were just never for me you know and then so facing rejection in a in a professional sense like yes I've had great jobs but I think where I felt rejected or where the rejection came in, in was just you know the constant layoffs and then girl let's not talk about these during relationships like I feel like I faced a lot of relate uh, like a lot of rejection in relationships like in dating and stuff and so that's I'm gonna be honest guys like that's also part of the reason why like I'm not just gung-ho about dating because it's like with my personality I'm a Capricorn and we are loyal to a freaking fault all my bombshell Capricorns way in and uh in the comments section but guys like for y'all who don't you know like if you've never dealt with a Capricorn that's one of the Capricorns that's one of our greatest strengths but it's also one of our greatest um downfalls is that we are super freaking loyal and so like because i'm either i go i'm either 100 all in and i'm giving my all i'm giving nothing at all there is no gray area with me either i'm one either i fuck with you or i don't it ain't no gray with me and so uh i've done that in my past relationships where i've just given i went all in because that's all i know how to do and those relationships have never worked out and it's just like like now i just give up because it's like i'm just tired and i just don't want to i don't want to give anymore you know what i'm saying even just with dating and stuff and so i just feel like because i've been extremely successful on youtube like that's one of my biggest accomplishments you know and i also feel like youtube and uh weight loss like me really just deciding i was gonna lose weight and i was gonna keep my weight off uh after having weight loss surgery i feel like those are the only two things that i've really 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 given my all to that have not rejected me and so that is why i talk about youtube a lot because that's been the only thing uh you know like youtube is kind of like you are only going to be as successful as you believe that you're going to be so if you don't believe that you're going to be successful you not you know what i'm saying and this is like one of the only one of the only things i've ever done in my life where i, I where i feel like i saw a vision and then i created a way to make it come to pass and that's really really sad and so it's like i do talk a lot about that i do post like my my you know my um my um i was gonna say contributions but that's not the word i'm looking for i guess i my milestones if you will you know what i'm saying i post that stuff a lot because it really does mean a lot to me because this is also um this is one of the things where oh like ain't no dude like uh you know oh if it wasn't for me you wouldn't have this if it wasn't for me it's not a situation like that and then you know just kind of going back to like dating and stuff like that like i've just not had like a lot of awesome relationships guys and so it's just like i don't know but anyway i just wanted to have that conversation niggas ain't got respect niggas just got it so i put that top left i love my cody to death i will use the x if you don't say it direct give a fuck Shoot my shot and still come wildways Going in, he in love, sick on sitting sideways Breaking team, used to be an anti-social nigga Now I'm making friends I just got a mansion not in person It's a beachfront Cause she bringing four friends I know I hit at least one Got a mom tanning by the pool And they greased up Police in my city, man I keep their pockets greased up Me and Capo trying to leave our mark And piece the east up Ain't nobody making too much money Y'all could be stuck But I be for rapper Cause I'm never with the sweet stuff Daddy came from Mexico, she know she got the sweet stuff Hey, niggas ain't got respect Niggas just got accept I put that top left I love my Cody to death High Williams, no X If you don't say it direct, give a fuck Rex, I live my jeans, yeah. hey, Rex Let me tell you my teeth, I call her Like I told you, I bet I put on Rex If they tell my phone, you know I wouldn't be I'm on top, I'm on top, I'm on top. 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 I'm on
to the thrift store and I found a scarf to kind of um, put on that skirt like to kind of you know cover the skirt or whatever but when I got the scarf home it does not oh sorry y'all it don't match or right, it, it, it's a beautiful scarf the outfit is beautiful but together it just does not it's just not it's, it's just not the move so I'm going to try to figure something else out as far as the the skirt makeover hack, whatever. Um, I went to Cyclone Anias or Anilis or however you pronounce that. So I went there and I got something to eat. And then I just kind of, you know, hung out, kicked it in city center a little bit or whatever. And that was fun. Um... So, yeah, but I'm wore out. I'm tired. I need to take these lashes off, this makeup off. I need to take a shower and chill. But, girl, I, ca I came home and I put on my cute little pajamas. And so, um, y'all, I was, uh, I sent in a service request today because my AC thermometer and stuff stopped working. I hope I ain't tell y'all this already, but girl. So, the AC thermometer, or none of that stuff, it, it, it stopped working. I don't know why. So, girl, I put a service request in, and so I was like, well, I'm going to wait here, you know, wait at the house until they come and fix everything. Girl, y'all, they didn't fix the shit from a control room. So, y'all know I'm used to living in an apartment. Not an apartment, but I'm used to living in an a, a, a apartment. Apartment. And so, this is, um, you know, I'm like, man, this shit is modern. And you're, when I first moved over here, girl... I ain't know how to, uh, I'm going to be honest, guys. I was so used to that old ran down ass stove I was telling y'all about in that ran down ass refrigerator, girl. I was, you know, I was just used to turning, you know, like turning the knob on, waiting for the burner to get hot. And so everything here is so modern. And so I had to kind of come up to, <laughs> you know, more, you know, new age technology. So I thought that was pretty cool that. When they did fix the AC, they didn't have to enter my unit. They just fixed it from downstairs. I thought that was awesome. So, yeah, girl, I'm trying to think. Um, I'm trying to think if I have anything else to tell you guys. Um, I don't think I do. Um, yeah, and I'm trying to think, girl, y'all. Oh, it feel like the camera's so far away. I'm going to bring it a little bit closer. Let's get up closer. That's a little bit better. Y'all, oh, I need to sit up. Y'all, I'm sitting in my, I'm sitting in my, um, uh, girl, we sitting in the, uh, old dusty auntie cafe chairs, honey. Cause baby, somebody had jumped in the comment section, girl. I deleted it. I ain't even say nothing. Baby, sis had jumped in the comment section and she was like, you need to get rid of them chairs. You need to get rid of them paintings. You need to get rid of this. Like, basically, she wanted the uh, bedroom to look like a jail cell. She told me that my apartment was overdone. It was too, it, it had too, it was crowded. It had too much stuff in it. And she said that, she said that the bombshell headquarters, girl, y'all, she said that it looked like an old, smoky, dusty auntie cafe. Baby, yes, she did. So, y'all. When she said it looked like an old, smoky, dusty auntie cafe, she told me all of the stuff I needed to get rid of. And then I deleted the message and I blocked whoever it was who sent the message. Baby, let me tell you, she she tiptoed her ass right on over to um Instagram straight flexing. And she tipped her ass right on over to Instagram. And she uh sent me that same message as well. Girl, her name, y'all, her name was Yousef. You self. And so anyway, you self went and made a fake account and snuck on over to you Instagram. And so I basically deleted the message there. It's good. Y'all, these people, they're a trip. They are a trip. But anyway, we had an eventful freaking day. We had an eventful day. We didn't have an, a nice little YouTube talk. We didn't have a fight with a damn wasp. 
Um, we went and got something to eat. We didn't have a car chat. We didn't have a rocks, uh, rocks random thoughts. Um, but girl, I y'all, I think, like I said, I'm sleepy. I'm about to, um, I'm gonna take these lashes and stuff off. Yeah, I'm gonna take these lashes off and, um, take off my makeup. And then we're going to jump in the shower. Well, I'm going to jump in the shower. And then I think I'm going to call it a night. So anyway, girl, I'm going to call y'all back. Oh, it ain't no one for guessing. No more than emotionally invested. Showing you all my imperfections. Oh, if I let you, don't take me for granted. Yeah, if I was more than you could manage.